what I'm going to talk about is power generation for a two degree world and really try and explain why I think uh, for new power generation, we're talking specifically here about new power generation plants, renewables and gas are the most sensible way to go. Um, some of you, I hope, will uh, remember that, uh, well, I'm going to talk about this, this concept we developed a few months ago called energy return on capital invested. Uh, the, the key point to remember with power generation, of course, is it's a very long-term uh, industry, uh, a very uh, long-term capital investment cycle, so you have to look at the economics over the long term. And the real question is, who wins in the long run? And that's what we're trying to uh, figure out with this energy return on capital uh, invested concept. So. Um, the point is, the long run is 40 years. I mean, that's how long your average power station, if you were building a gas or coal or nuclear uh, power station, that's how long you'd want it to run for. A lot can happen in 40 years. Uh, look what happened to the cost of solar generation in just the last five years. We've come from $400, these are IEA numbers, $400 per megawatt hour in only 2010 global benchmark price. Today, we're about $130 per megawatt hour. That's in five years. You know, this industry invests for 40 years. So the rules of the game have completely changed because the cost of renewables is coming down much more quickly than the incumbent industry can cope with. That's point number one. So what I thought would be interesting to do is talk you through three scenarios. I haven't got time in the 10 minutes that are being ruthlessly enforced today uh, to go through uh, many more scenarios that I think would explain this in much more detail. But I do want to try and get the principal uh, point across um, and so uh, I'm going to present three slides, all of which will look like this, but you will see the relationships change. In, in each case, what I'm trying to convey is for a $100 billion investment today in different forms of power generation, and I, I've just put oil up there uh, for good measure so that you can see, um, but really focus more on the power generation. For a $100 billion investment today, how much total energy over the lifetime of the investment would you get for a $100 billion, dollar, this is, we're in dollars here, $100 billion outlay, and at what cost would that energy come? So the total amount of energy you get in each case, and you can see that for a $100 billion investment, gas gives you the most energy over a 40-year period. This is assuming, by the way, this is the first, let's say, undisrupted nor business as usual as was, let's say, 10 years ago. In other words, you're building a base load fire, uh, power station, uh, a gas station that's expected to run at a load factor of 85% for the first 20 years and then maybe 60% for the remaining 20 years. Uh, so it's 40 years in the case of the thermal uh, power stations, nuclear, coal, gas. I've got CCS up here as well. Um, uh, the advantage of gas, of course, is it's much lower cost of um, building. The capital intensity is much lower. You can get uh, 1,000 megawatts of gas for $800 million uh, outlaid. And uh, if you then do the cost over the lifetime, you could sell that power assuming a $20 uh, carbon price. This is assuming $20 a ton for carbon, okay? The uh, selling price of that gas would be just over $80 per megawatt hour. Now, on this uh, first slide, uh, the renewables don't look that great. I've got them in green here, solar PV, uh, onshore wind and offshore wind. That's because the load factors are much lower. They're still relatively expensive to build in terms of the capital cost. And uh, therefore, you get this, uh, this uh, higher cost. Although, notice, first of all, even today, uh, on this basis, uh, onshore wind, you can sell at the same cost, more or less, same price as uh, coal and, uh, and gas. Nuclear, very, very expensive. I've taken, this will be controversial in a room full of, uh, well, uh, with some French investors in here and probably some French nuclear engineers in here. But um, I've taken the capital cost there from the current estimates for Flamanville, which is running at about $5.6 billion dollars per gigawatt, okay? So uh, Flamanville, first of a kind, uh, the costs are meant to come down, but that's the reality of where the cost is today, okay? So new nuclear looks very expensive to me, uh, and the energy yield you get over the lifetime compared with gas is much lower. However, the key point is, as uh, uh, no doubt many of you have already worked out, this world is long gone. You can't build uh, power stations today and expect them to run for 40 years at base load for the first 20 years. Uh, E.ON, um, recently shut down about a month ago their Ershing power plant, most, effect, most efficient gas-fired power station in the world, probably. It's been shut down. They didn't get anything like 19,000 terawatt hours over the lifetime of their investment. They were getting probably 
200 hours per year of uh, operation, and it was premised on 6,000 hours uh, per year. So the rules of the game have changed. Now, Germany's a special case, but let's look what happens if we assume that you can't run base load and you can only run from the outset if you're building a new gas-fired or coal-fired power station at a 50% load factor. Nuclear and CCS, they don't change. They're running at uh, base load over the lifetime. They're carbon free. And again, this is still only assuming a 20 euro per ton, uh, 20 euro per ton uh, carbon price. Now, renewables still being penalized because I've assumed here that they will only run for 20 years. Okay, so that's another reason why the renewables are not looking great yet uh, versus the fossil fuels. But already you can see that uh, gas and coal, the economics look a lot worse. Uh, you're, not, you're not getting anything like the same amount of running hours and the cost is higher, okay. Um, fast forward to the final slide, which I think is, is the more interesting one, because here we're still using European Union renewable conditions. Uh, if we want to see what the future looks like, we can look at what the best available conditions for renewables are already today, anywhere in the world. So if you look at this uh, final slide and look at the change in both the profile of the cost, the selling price, and the amount of terawatt hours you can get over the lifetime on an absolute basis for renewables and on a relative basis versus, uh, versus the uh, traditional uh, power generation sources. And you can see um, here I've taken uh, the best solar conditions in the world today, which uh, Dubai famously uh, recently signed a 20-year uh, tender to sell electricity at $58 per megawatt hour. And you can get a load factor there of about 25%. Uh, so uh, you can see that solar already on this assumption, and again assuming that your fossil fuel plants can only run at a 50% load factor initially, uh, solar is much, much cheaper than coal or gas. Uh, onshore wind, you're getting a very good, uh, very good yield in some parts of the world already today. If you put a, a, um, uh, an onshore wind plant in Texas, you can get a, a capacity factor of between 45 and 50% compared with 25%. In Europe, and again, you can get a selling price uh, well below $60. Uh, so, uh, and, and even that is probably uh, conservative. Uh, obviously, uh, that starts to look much more attractive, and there's room for further improvement because uh, massive scope to bring down the cost of solar uh, further and to improve technology of turbines and put much bigger turbines on. So, there's all upside here. I think the key point to note is if you're building uh, solar parks and onshore wind farms in the best locations in the world already today, then even given the much higher upfront capital cost, if you look at the selling price you'd be selling at to consumers, on a cost-adjusted basis, the energy return on capital invested for onshore wind today is already as good as, if not better, than it is for gas. And I think that's a very important, a very important uh, uh, indication of where we're heading because as I said the cost of these alternative technologies is coming down uh, so fast so my reckoning is if you want to get the best outcome for dollars invested uh, selling price to consumers and climate impact it's really got to be renewables uh, with gas I just think uh, nuclear it just looks way too expensive for the uh, energy return you can get, unless you can significantly reduce the cost of building new nuclear power stations. But if anything, uh, that cost is, is likely to go up in the, the short term uh, further. Coal, I've used a slightly higher cost of capital, I should have said as well, because I think the carbon risk on that is becoming greater. And it's just becoming harder and harder to finance coal plants in any case, uh, because banks are becoming more reluctant to do it. CCS, a bit disappointing still, the capital cost today. I've imputed the capital cost here. I've assumed that uh, when uh, most of the developers today will tell you they need a carbon price of about $80 a tonne uh, to make CCS competitive, if you work that back, the imputed capital cost is about $5 billion, just under $5 billion per gigawatt. So again, it's looking pretty similar to, uh, to nuclear. So I think the strong conclusion when you're looking at it on this energy return on capital basis, a cost-adjusted energy return on capital invested basis, it has to be renewables and gas.